This is a, a very interesting question. In the uh, recent years, there's been a real trend for conscious sedation for thrombectomy, and uh, uncontrolled studies suggested that that was the way to go with patients awake, and the procedures have become quicker and more efficient. And uh, I made the conversion from general anesthesia to uh, conscious sedation. However, I still find that for some patients with large strokes, particularly uh, dominant hemisphere strokes where language is impaired, where the patients can't uh, cooperate adequately, the general anesthesia is indicated. Um, it really comes down to a question of whether you have good quality, reliable uh, anesthesia who can act quickly and have a patient off to sleep. Uh, without dropping the blood pressure and, and be willing to extubate the patient at the end of the case. So with the uh, advent of the randomized perspective uh, siesta trial uh, recently being reported, I've certainly uh, lowered my threshold for uh, doing, going back to general anesthesia. And particularly for patients with difficult anatomy, um, I really think it's the procedure itself, the endovascular procedure is much safer when you have the patient not moving and you have good visibility and if it is a difficult lesion that requires more than one pass, uh, you find that you are very thankful that you have anesthesia there. But, but the key really is having quality anesthesia immediately available. I think that's a really interesting question, uh, whether or not to uh, give thrombolysis. I, I think that uh, we all understand that for large clot burdens that IVTPA is relatively ineffective. The key point is whether or not the intravenous TPA uh, delays the thrombectomy, which is really the treatment of choice. So I think if there's any delay uh, that comes about as a result of thrombolysis, then you sh probably should be considering going straight to thrombectomy. Clearly this is something that would be best served by a, by a trial. Um, but the practical reality is that at the moment most large volume centers have become very efficient and the, the IV thrombolysis doesn't delay the thrombectomy at all. So I think the, the primary question is uh, can we reduce the rate of uh, post-procedural hemorrhages by uh, avoiding the TPA and that's, that's really to me what the, what the issue is and uh, I think to answer that question really demands a trial. I think that's very much a case-by-case -case thing and uh, certainly don't have um, any preconceived notion uh, about the higher grade AVMs. In fact, the higher grade AVMs that are on rupture the grade fours and the grade fives, if, if uh, anything, we uh, don't treat those unless there's some uh, overwhelming progressive neurological deterioration. Uh, seizure, some other reason to try and palliate those cases. The grade ones and twos, the simple AVMs, young patients, I think one can make a very strong case for uh, treating those. But the primary treatment uh, really is uh, surgery or, or radio surgery, and for many of those cases, embolization has a relatively um, minor uh, role, if, if at all. The grade threes are uh, a completely different situation and that really uh, has to be on a case by case and probably many of the unruptured grade 3 AVMs are best left alone uh, but again I think that's very much a case by case decision.